evening. So this particular research paper is called Darwin Godel Machine, Open-Ended Evolution of Self-Improving Agents. And it's put out by University of British Columbia, the Vector Institute, Sakana AI, and Canada SciFAR. And overall, um, this research paper is interesting to me. It's concepts that I've been talking about um, for a while, again, obviously on this channel, uh, with regards towards coupling. Uh, in this instance, they couple genetic algorithms with LM models. And then so my framework has been you can couple genetic algorithms and or swarm algorithms with LM models in order to get uh, huge gains. And that like those systems are better than any other system that you could really build. Right. And that there's nothing stopping a uh, system being built where you have the LM model at the center of it. And then you have, uh, you know, it's, it's surrounded by uh, like a swarm algorithms, genetic algorithms, et cetera. And then that framework allows for kind of like a, a brain and a digital body is like really the, the framework that I look at it in that particular instance uh, with particularly with swarm algorithms, genetic algorithms operate differently. Right. And then so Sakana AI is really big on um, swarm on genetic algorithms overall. Like that's their whole philosophy. Um, Sakana AI is founded by uh, a few people from like a few former Googlers, like a few of them are um, like uh, authors of attention is all you need. So they have a lot of experience overall. And then they like um, these types of models are very specifically like what they put out and build. So it doesn't surprise me at all to see uh, this model coming out from them very specifically. Um, and then so uh, they released the good thing with this is that they released like all of the code uh, via GitHub here uh, via their GitHub repository. Um, and then so you can see it. So it's a repository for the Darwin Godel machine, a novel self improving system that iteratively modifies its own code thereby also improving its ability to modify its own code base and empirically validates each change using coding benchmarks. Uh, and then so this is essentially the uh, framework. It's so it's again like a uh, it, they use Claude in this instance, right? And then so this is powered by uh, Claude. Uh, and then you just um, uh, run through and then run the framework. And then so you have the parent agent, which creates the code base. Uh, the also the parent agent for the self modification step, which then leads to the child agent, uh, and then uh, that's all modified via task evaluation. I'll show you and, and um, demonstrate what this looks like uh, via the code here in just a second. I think I think uh, I can demonstrate it and walk you through it pretty easily overall. But so with the scientific process, it, it's um, pretty straightforward, right? So they essentially you just um, uh, come up with a candidate. Um, and then from that, you come up with candidate and then, uh, mutations. And then from that, the, uh, you like modify the mutations. It's kind of like a big decision tree that pops out. Um, and then those mutations are like a uh, different genetic, uh, mutations and like different genetic variations of the algorithms. And then you're able to essentially like modify the algorithm and have the algorithm go through its self modification process there, um, overall. This particular research paper, it's so it's um, pretty short um, with the the initial setup here. Um, they give their their results, their benchmarks, exactly how it works. It's like nine pages long, basically. Uh, but you can see this is a 64 page research paper, right? <laughs> and then so uh, go past the, the nine pages here and then the, the uh, lots and lots of um, references here. Um, but then so then you go here and they list it as a supplementary material. Uh, and it's like, I mean, this is like a 40 pages of the, the research paper here, right? And then this is the, the meat of the research paper uh, and everything that you would want here. Uh, they give like all of the algorithmic details. Um, so like uh, exactly how they build the genetic algorithms here in this particular instance. Uh, and then the self-improving prompts. Again, they, they build it off of a uh, Claude. Uh, and then the thing I like about this is the most important part of this, right, is, is uh, so uh, the cost estimate. I think people like uh, they think that like these things are, are very cool, very novel, and then they don't understand the, the actual cost behind this. Right. So the estimated cost of completing a single run of this framework as presented in Section four is about twenty two thousand uh, dollars. Just highlighting that overall. Right. So if you're to, to set this up to, to run it and then you want to like run it on like their full benchmark test, like the, the, the full uh, run of it, twenty two thousand dollars to run uh, to get it to like 
do something. Um, for utilizing Claude 3.5 Sonnet, you're looking at about $350. Uh, to do something with O3 Mini, you're looking at about $5. <laughs> and so uh, it's not like, again, not not cheap, right? Just bench, like uh, pointing out that um, as well. Um, and then these are all of the different tasks that they, they uh, had to go through and they benchmarked it out. So like, um, it's easy to, to build and um, to design frameworks for these things, right? Like uh, I could design and, and build out uh, and give you models along these lines that do these types of things I have. I've built a lot of models that do these types of things, right? But I mean, like, uh, I'm not going to pay twenty-two thousand dollars just to prove it out, right? Like, uh, in my particular instance, like that's what people don't understand within these things, right? It's one thing to to prove out the model. Like, here's the model. That's why I just release models all day long, right? It's it because it's uh, the code at that point. But then it's uh, twenty-two thousand dollars to train on top of that. That's where the like significant parts and and expenses come in within this. And so I try to avoid. Honestly, the, personally, the, the expensive uh, portions of um, this activity overall. And then so, I mean, it, the research paper is uh, mostly just with regards towards, uh, again, the bulk of it, 40 pages of it is setting this up, right? And then so I think I can do, I can give you a gentler introduction into uh, setting this up, starting with a gentle introduction to genetic algorithms. So I, I actually, I have a full video on this. If you just uh, like um, search literally a gentle introduction to genetic algorithms, uh, I go through this entire notebook fully and give you kind of the, the, the full explanation as to how genetic algorithms work, but just giving you kind of the basic break breakdown here. Genetic algorithms are search and optimization techniques inspired by the process of natural selection. They belong to the larger class of evolutionary algorithms, which include genetic and swarm algorithms primarily, which generate solutions to optimization problems using mechanisms inspired by biological evolution, such as inheritance, mutation, selection, and crossover. Why genetic algorithms? Genetic algorithms are particularly useful for complex problems with large search bases, problems where traditional optimization methods struggle, situations where approximate solutions are acceptable, and problems with multiple objects, objectives or constraints. And then so your basic uh, concept is that you have an initialization process, an evaluation, selection, crossover, mutation, and replacement. And that's kind of how that works overall. Um, and then when you look through and, and you go through uh, all of that and you do all of that, um, this is kind of what it comes out with, right? You get like fitness functions and then it's all um, based off of fitness functions. Um, and then you go through uh, and then try to find the... the um, best scoring uh, agent within those particular fitness functions. And then you can utilize this for like basically anything overall, right? That's what I try to show you here. So I evolved the chocolate chip cookie recipes with genetic algorithms. And then in this instance, I just give it like all of the ingredients, right? And then like, um, and this is the the uh, best of all cookie recipe uh, that uh, according to, to uh, this genetic swarm algorithm, uh, this, this genetic algorithm, uh, which is uh, like a bunch of flour, some sugar, some brown sugar, some butter, two eggs, baking soda, some salt, uh, vanilla, chocolate chip, bake it for 12 minutes, and then you bake it at 174.75 degrees Celsius exactly for the perfect cookie recipe uh, that is evolved from our genetic algorithms here. Uh, and then more specifically, so again, they, they released the, the full code in their repository, which they linked to the paper here. So then if you want to play through with it and, and go through like the, the full example, again, it's going to cost you anywhere from five to $350 just to simply run this. So keep that in mind, right? Every single time that you do anything with it, that's, that's going to be the price that you pay there. But so if you just want to know like what, what, like what does this actually do? What does this look like? I have this here for you. So this is the Darwin Godel machine framework. Um, and then essentially just kind of breaking down exactly what, um, the genetic agents do in this instance, right? So it, again, it's, it's like they're utilizing Claude in this instance. And then, and so it's just Claude plus uh, genetic age agents and genetic algorithms, right? Um, and then, so um, within this, I, I create some benchmarks to test it against, and then we have mutation strategies, right? And then, so that's a, a large part of it. And then this is a large part of the logic. And then mutation strategies, it's all like um, mathematics, a lot of linear algebra uh, with regards towards like the mutations, how you set them up, but like linear algebra and calculus, uh, like um, 
you go through and then you have your agents themselves and then so you define the coding agents and then so it like uh the coding agents are like you know like what's actually like writing evaluating the code and then adjusting it so this is like how it's like updating itself um and then you have from there you uh the mutations can create offspring and then so you define exactly how that crossover occurs uh and then so in this instance it's just a simple line based crossover so it's creating offspring by combining the code from two parents and then just like uh just you know randomly taking uh, some from from one parent some from the other and boom <laughs> there you go uh, and then you have uh, an evaluator of the um, functions that come out of that um, and then it just like all of the code to so like the thing with genetic algorithms it's a lot of code to set up and a lot of mathematics and then so this is like uh, uh, all of the like so essentially you just wrap this all in a real world instance you just give this and wrap this all around Claude right or or open AI or whatever model you're using you just have uh, this is like again like the 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 body the the workings and then your LM model is like the brain that is uh, processing all of this like the central agent that that this goes to uh, and then it, it makes this all smarter and I'll demonstrate that here and, and show you why that's important here uh, when we go to the outputs here so in this instance, uh, I have three benchmarks. They ran for 30 iterations. Uh, and then we have our initial agent that we have here and then our initial agent fitness. Uh, and then we go through and then we have like uh, all of these uh, iterations and mutations, right? And then the thing to note is that like none of like almost like the only iteration that ever gets higher than uh, the uh, initial fitness of 0.378 is we get a 0.386 <laughs> and and then like uh, that's our like our our best score that we get this uh, and then it it's generally like oscillating between like uh, 0 0 0.236 and 0 0.386 and then also to that starting th uh, 0 0.376 uh, and then those are kind of just our our main metrics here and then so our average fitness and our best fitness comes out to 0.386 and then 0.386 for the average as well so not a lot of diversity within this right and then so what we're looking at here is a major problem with uh, genetic and swarm algorithms if you run them on their own <laughs> and then so I've, I've demonstrated this um, a lot before on my channel as well right like uh, it's uh, our diversity scores are always very low like they they find a local minimum uh, a local minima rather than the global uh, glo a local maxima rather than the global maxima and then they, they just are attracted to that and it's like they, they don't get past that <laughs> they're just stuck in that local minima and they're never going to go anywhere else beyond that that's just how it is right um and then so attaching the central brain the lm model gives it the the power to move past that local minima right that's kind of what the like the major uh, advancement is of attaching the LM model to this is that you get it to like actually mutate like so like attaching like a Claude model to this gets you like actual numbers right like, there's no deviation there's no diversity in these numbers here right and then so if you go through and you look at uh, these numbers and these outputs as opposed to to what they're um, showcasing here at some point uh, within this it's a drastic difference right their their outputs and their results are drastically different because they're play they're uh, paying twenty two thousand dollars to uh, train and and plug this and then have like a big brain run it right and it's yeah so here right like uh, big massive improvements like uh like our like we're never gonna come anywhere close to this because we're not paying to where this is free right so uh the free version versus the twenty two thousand dollar version it's significant difference uh with regards towards this but with the free version we get to see it, like what it what it looks like understand it all like we can dissect put it all to like uh reverse engineer it engineer it put it all back together again all of that uh 100 with the free version which is like why i like playing around with these things right I don't, we don't have to pay the twenty two thousand dollars unless we want to see the end result in the end which uh, it's it is what it is <laughs> we're all right but so the uh interesting thing and i guess the the uh more important thing like uh, beyond the technical aspect of this is the the philosophical uh aspect of this overall right and then uh, like i'll leave that up to you but so to me um 
these self-improving models, self-improving agents, et cetera, like, uh, and these specifically utilizing these frameworks with utilizing an LM model, wrapping it around um, genetic and or swarm algorithms is a playground that I've been playing around with for a while now. So for me personally, like this is nothing like new overall or, or uh, you know, I've thought through <laughs> all of these questions before, but so um, this is flat out, uh, a agent being able to um, improve itself, right? Like, like it meets uh, like every definition that you would, every basic definition that you would want under that in terms of the philosophy of that. And, and so, whatever that means to you philosophically, like I, I'll leave that um, up to different discussions within this. Uh, to me, I want to focus uh, more of this on the like this particular video on the technical side and the technical aspects of this as opposed like that's exactly what they're laying out here but like just uh highlighting that i do and am aware that there's a big philosophical aspect to this as well and then it does raise a lot of philosophical questions and then so i'll dive into that in a future video but overall here here is the darwin godel machine open-ended evolution of self-improving agents put out again by university of british columbia vector institute sakana ai and canada sci-fi like this type of content please like subscribe thank you very much